64-year-old Dr. Bob Lefkowitz came to North Carolina in 1973. A cardiologist and researcher, Turbo Bob, as he's sometimes known, charged ahead during earlier stints at the National Institutes of Health and a Harvard-related hospital in the study of cellular receptors for adrenaline and related molecules. Research here has continued at Duke University ever since. Receptors are found in cell membrane. They are like a lock. And the adrenaline or other hormone is like a key, which has to fit in perfectly into that lock and leads to a signal going into the cell, uh, which is then able to change the physiology of the cell. For example, in a frightening situation, the brain would signal for the secretion of adrenaline in the blood. And it interacts with an adrenergic receptor in a cell membrane. If this were a heart cell, the cell would beat more strongly and more rapidly. In their cells, airways would dilate, both responses allowing the person greater capacity to run away. At Duke University Medical School, Lefkowitz worked as a cardiologist in the wards and clinics, as well as did his research. By 1976, he became an investigator for the prestigious Howard Hughes Medical Institute, which has funded his research to this day. When I started my research, nothing was known about the presumed interaction of hormones and drugs and neurotransmitters with these mythical receptors. And there was tremendous skepticism at that time as to whether these things existed. So Lefkowitz and colleagues set out to prove they do. They used as a model beta adrenergic receptors for adrenaline, developing new technologies in the process. We developed what are called radio ligands. Radially active labeled molecules like adrenaline, which would bind to their receptors. And to remove them, the fatty cell membrane was dissolved in detergent. All that took a dozen years. The receptors are very rare. Perhaps one in two or three hundred thousand molecules in the cell membrane would actually be the receptor we were interested in. So we used very specific tools to do that. To prove the molecules were indeed adrenaline receptors, they made liquid vesicles much like a child's soap bubbles and stuck the receptors into them. Then they found a cell which didn't have any receptors for adrenaline and fused the vesicles to it. The cell was able to bind the adrenaline. Once we had done this, we proved that receptors really did exist. Then, working with tiny quantities of purified adrenaline receptors, Bob and company were able, in 1986, to clone the receptor gene and decipher its amino acid sequence. And that was one of our biggest discoveries, because we found that the receptor protein wove back and forth across the plasma membrane seven times. We speculated that perhaps many different receptors might have the same structure and share the characteristic that they signal through another protein called a G protein. In the ensuing decade, Bob and his team and other scientists using their methods found over 1,000 different seven membrane spanning receptors, including those for taste, smell and sight, the largest receptor family by far. So really most of our sensory system works through these receptors. So, gentlemen, uh, good afternoon. <laughs> Sixty percent of all drugs in current use now work by uh, acting upon the class of receptors that Dr. Lefkowitz studied. So this, this work is at the very top. These drugs can either be agonists, for example, histamine, released by an allergic reaction into the bloodstream and binding to receptors, causing hives, or antagonists, such as an antihistamine drug, which can prevent histamine from binding and thus blocks the allergic reaction. Is that the techniques that we've developed have permitted much more rapid development of drugs. The drug companies can basically use cell lines which express the individual receptors and very rapidly screen even millions of compounds uh, for specific effects on receptors. The second way is that our work led to the discovery of dozens and dozens of what are called receptor subtypes. For example, there are nine subtypes of receptors for adrenaline and 15 for serotonin. It's possible to design drugs 
which are much more specific for one or the other receptor subtype. So there'll be less side effect. The kind of detail work he's done over years made him so distinctive and distinguished. Uh, it's focus and perseverance. Another vital discovery was that when stimulants bind to receptors, the responding signaling through G proteins rises and then falls in seconds to minutes. This desensitization phenomenon greatly limits the therapeutic efficacy of many stimulant drugs. Bob found the cause. An enzyme called GRK transfers the phosphate group onto the tail of the 7 transmembrane receptor, and another protein called berestin then binds to it to desensitize G protein signals. It's only really in the last few years that these really remarkable uh, fluorescent microscopic assays have been developed that have allowed us to use the microscope. So when I was at the bench myself, be using more biochemical techniques and working, you know, with test tubes. In the past five years, Lefkowitz had another unexpected breakthrough. This two-component system of GRK enzyme and beta arrestin also leads to new signaling to other pathways, some of which is enhanced cell survival, decreased cell death. This will represent an entirely new form of therapeutic agent, which may be more effective than the drugs we have today. For example, a patient with coronary artery problems, mostly due to excessive adrenaline stimulation, can be given a drug that both stops the harmful effect of adrenaline and protects heart cells from dying. Bob Lefkowitz, without question, is one of the greatest scientists of our times, one of the brightest minds in the world. Bob is very energetic, and he has magical ways to uh, motivate his uh, associates to do science in an unconventional way and uh, were creative and also were focused. And meanwhile, he always helps us to develop uh, leadership in science. Wei Chen is one of over 200 scientists uh, mentored by Lefkowitz, for which Bob won the Eugene Brownward Award last year. He says it's his favorite among his numerous prizes. I really do view my own uh, primary activity is just interacting with the students and fellows are trying to model for them what a career in science is like. So I would like them to, to, uh, to take away certain principles that I have sort of used. One of the most important ones is that if you want to get an important answer in science, you have to ask an important question, which is answerable by you. But it wasn't always easy. No matter how successful you are, 98% of what you do doesn't work. I must admit, when I was at doing most of my own experiments, I would get very, very frustrated, and uh, it was very, very difficult to deal with. But uh, I think one just has to keep one's eye on the, uh, the long-term goal. Persistence, absolute dogged persistence, is one of the most important characteristics of a successful scientist. The other thing he brings is great energy and good humor a great sense of optimism and courage. Bob's a lifelong runner. 16 years ago, through his hobby, Bob met his second wife, Lynn. I was working at Duke as an administrative secretary. And at the time, I was jogging and running too. Somehow, we just started running together and became friends and then um, became husband and wife. <laughs> He's just so much fun to be with. I mean, he has the most wonderful sense of humor. He's so witty and has just has such an upbeat personality. Bob has five grown children by his first wife and four grandchildren. Lynn says the couple do discuss Bob's work. I can't say I really fully understand everything he does, and I appreciate because he shares with me his, um, his troubles and his frustrations and with me about the successes. In terms of the specifics, uh, I'm glad that uh, she's not particularly interested, and, and I'm glad to get away from talking about that. On a typical day... When I come home, I'm ravenously hungry. But Lynn is a fabulous cook, and we're both vegetarians. Because um, I've, I've just always had a lot of compassion for animals. It's because I have a very strong family history of heart disease in both my parents. That's one reason Lefkowitz went to study medicine at Columbia University. 
Uh, I lived in New York City, and my family physician actually made house calls. By the third grade of elementary school, I had pretty much decided I wanted to be a practicing physician, and in particular as a cardiologist. And after dinner? He works, been on papers and things, all evening. My sense is he thinks about science, about ideas and projects and plans for the future and experiments almost all the time. But I guess we love to travel together, too. Mm -hmm. and, uh, just, and just relax and read. And right, just, just hang out together. Yeah. <laughs> we like watching old movies. Whatever it is, I mean, I either do it or I don't do it. But if I'm doing it... Uh, He's all in. All in, right.